Today, this morning, in the first session of the scan day, we are going to look at uh, entrepreneurship and self-reliance among the youth. Entrepreneurship and self-reliance among the youth. And just as Father Raymond has said, this fits very well <coughs> in our theme. Young man, get up, get up, move, move, be on the move. I recall about 30 years ago, one of the, the, youth, the theme of the youth worldwide was youth on the move. So it was emphasizing that youth don't be seated, don't be stagnant, youth don't be idle, youth don't be there, youth don't be gazing, youth don't be confused. So it talked it talk, it talk to us, that theme talked to us, to us, to, to be on the move. And then it was also repeated towards the year 2000, the youth be on the move. And so as we talk about youth, entrepreneurship, and self-reliance, it indeed fits in what we are proclaiming. And the, the church worldwide starts the year of St. Joseph, the worker. As a student of business, I look at Joseph who's works as being entrepreneurial. The simple word we can use is that Joseph was an enterprising spouse, God the Father, as the Father, rather, of Jesus, and an example. That's why on 1st May we, 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 we remember his day when he, especially we say, Joseph the worker. He was entrepreneurial. He was a worker. And Joseph at that time was young. So we can take ourselves in those years. Imagine someone who is beginning to, to court a young lady in the community. That means he was young. Just exactly our years. You are years young people. But later we learn of Joseph, the worker. And we see the pictures of the Holy Family when he is, you know, in his carpentry, doing the work. So as we talk about youth entrepreneurship and self-reliance, let's not look at the big things. At times with the youth, want to look at the big things. I have studied all these uh, uh, certificates, degrees, what can I do? I think I need to be in a, a big building like the Bank of Uganda, and that's where I can be entrepreneurial, I can use my knowledge. No, we are talking about self-reliance and entrepreneurship at the grassroots, at our level. And so in the next couple of minutes, we are going to share some ideas. I want to disclaim that I'm not going to give a lecture class-wise that, you know, pick what I'm going to say and after that I have an exam to give you. No, we want to discuss, we want to share. And that's why I therefore encourage dear moderator, as many youth as possible worldwide who are online, to send in their comments, to send in their questions, to, share, to send in their experience. I would be happy within the next the two hours we are together to get some experience of a youth who is listening from uh, possibly a smartphone while he's in the carpentry. I want to hear those experiences and then we shall say yes. Do you hear young people? That this is a personal experience of a youth somewhere. I want to hear of a youth who is saying I'm actually in the garden weeding my maze now. I'm actually in my, my workshop. I was welding a door but I have stopped because of the noise. I want to tune in the radio. But I'm at the workshop. I'm a welder. I want to hear a young man saying, you know, I'm actually carrying my cargo around. I'm moving around the community, looking for people to buy the merchandise that I have. That is youth entrepreneurship and the self-reliance. But before we get into that gymnastics of how practically the youth should get into this, Let's first lay the ground. Let's first look at the environment. 
Let's first look at the, the, this, the, this concept at a higher level. Because the entrepreneurship is in the mind. So it is, a, it is a concept. It is an idea. It is not something you can touch. If I told you to, to move around the community to touch the word entrepreneurship, you will not see it. But what you see is what entrepreneurs have done. What has come out of the entrepreneurial mind. And therefore, what is the entrepreneurship at that level as a concept in order for us to get it right and see how it comes down? Entrepreneurship, dear friends, is to do with identifying opportunities. Putting your mind together and taking advantage of those opportunities. It is to do with the identifying opportunities. Put your focus, put your mind on those opportunities and take advantage of the opportunity. Once you have done that, then the next phrase is take risk to exploit the opportunity. Just take risk. There is no smoothness. There is no, there is no flat bed in the entrepreneurial mind. And I usually give many examples. And I like some youth in Kampala who are very sharp. And those of you who have walked around Kampala, you will agree with what I'm about to say. If it is grasshopper season, they put aside Vaseline and start talking grasshoppers. Today, this is a Senene season. Go around Kampala, you will see the youth. You can look now for Vaseline and you not see it. You say I want Vaseline, you do not see it. And yet the hawkers with the Vaseline are over the place. Because it's now what? In Senene. They are now in the season for grasshoppers. You'll be walking around the Kampala in July and look for an umbrella. You have to enter a supermarket or an arcade to get it. But wait when it is raining, like around this time where we are coming from. In a few minutes, every hawker has umbrellas and very expensive. And at that time, whether you are proud or not, you buy it without negotiating the price. And the young man will make more profit on one umbrella to compensate even one month he has spent working in Vaseline without getting enough customers. That is the entrepreneurial mind I'm talking about. Not these big minds of putting up story building. No, that level. And so at times when I walk around Kampala, to me, it is a learning, a, learning, a learning process. And I like learning in that case. As Father mentioned, I am a professor of business, of strategy. But I learn a lot from those workers. I learn a lot. They are very sharp. They know how to identify the opportunity. They look around, understand the environment, and understand the people. They know how to understand the people. And that's why one of the characteristics I will mention down, but I bring it around right now, is they will look at you and give you a particular price. I use Vaseline again. The Vaseline to a hawker doesn't have a standard price. It will range between 1000 to 10000 and they know who pays 10000 without negotiating. At the same time, they know who will negotiate up to 6000 And they also know to whom they will sell the basic price of 1000 in order for them to survive that day. Because they know even if they sell at 1000 in a loss, tomorrow they will get someone who will buy 10000 without negotiating. And they will make 9000 profit to compensate yesterday's sale. That is the entrepreneurial mind that we, the young people, must have. But how can we have that entrepreneurial mind? In which, in which setting should it be? In which setting should it be? So let's first look at the business landscape in Uganda. The business landscape. In the geography, we're taught a landscape is that setting of the, of the earth, the hills and the valleys across my eyes on the horizon. 
So when you talk about business landscape, it is also to look out there and see what are the hills and valleys in business. In Uganda, the business landscape is characterized by small micro enterprises. Standing where you are in Uganda, you will see small micro enterprises. And those enterprises, according to the statistics from Uganda Bureau of Statistics, usually employ one or two people, at most five, or beyond up to 50. They are family owned. They deal in multiple products. A soda will be sold there, handkerchiefs are sold there, a pen is sold there. A suite is sold there. They are that type of business. Multiple merchandise. They do not have permanent structures. They do not have permanent structures. Why am I bringing out these? So that we start seeing that it is possible to, to be self-reliant. Because the young people, I, I, I tell people that if you give a professor a business to start it will fail because i will spend a year trying to calculate too many things and by the time i finish business opportunity will have gone but business is about risk do not start looking at this and that how much shall i put what shall i do no it is about risk once you have seen the opportunity so the small enterprises are characteristic of semi-permanent or even no structures they don't have structures. You have seen businesses under umbrellas. You have seen businesses under canvas. Canvases. This is Tundubale. A piece of Tundubale. Someone puts a piece and he has business there. And he's surviving. Self reliance we are talking about. They are a characteristic of microfunding. Microfunding. They are not enterprises of huge sums of money. They actually defined as having between less than they put it in dollars. They say less than fifty thousand dollars. But when you talk of fifty thousand dollars, we are talking of about two hundred million or something like that. No, these are small micro enterprises of capital value of possibly less than a million, and they are surviving. They are there, but also they are ca characteristic of. Uh, Competition, they, they don't mind about competition. You find someone has a saloon there, another one puts it behind the door. And so when you are starting your enterprise, as we shall emphasize, close your eye and say, I will make mine best. <clears throat> because customers are not your children. You do not wake up to tell your children to come to my business today. You just wake up to open and wait to see customers. Who brings them? That's where our faith comes in now. So those small enterprises are characteristic of that. That's the business landscape. Now the other element in our business landscape are uh, a few medium enterprises. A few medium enterprises. And the few, uh, medium enterprises are uh, possibly two million, uh, and above, uh, two million dollars and above in financing. It's about possibly 500 million going on, you know. They, 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 they have about 50,000 as we said, and above in funding. And these are mainly uh, agro-related factories and a few processing industries. When we talk about the Mukwanos, they are medium enterprises, according to possible World Bank ranking. Whereas if you went outside the country, in some developed countries, we are talking of mega industries, where you stand and see out there, smoke of factories manufacturing cars these assembling this and that in uganda that's not our landscape our landscape a few medium enterprises that are mainly agro related a few are processing and a few are now beginning to come up as assembling in the industries assembling industries now we shall eventually link make the link that these be these medium enterprises 
and the small micro ones coexist. And that's the other point which we note. That the medium, if you had the huge ones, it would be great, but you have medium, but they coexist. Why? The workers who are rushing to a sugar factory will first want to buy a lindazi before entering the factory. They will first buy a sweet before entering the factory. Some of them will want a handkerchief before they enter in the factory. Therefore, providing opportunities in a multifaceted way around themselves. The business landscape in Uganda is also characteristic of mushrooming urban centers. Mushrooming urban centers. Today, countrywide, go on the highways, go on the small roads, the feeder roads, they are mushrooming urban centers, townships, trading centers, community centers. They are everywhere across the country. That's a key issue in our business landscape. That those, enter, those small trading centers coming up is an attraction to an entrepreneurial mind to identify the possible opportunities around themselves there. As people gather, their needs can easily be aggregated. You can easily identify the needs where they are. So that is one very, very key aspect of our, our landscape. We also note in our business landscape uh, across the country, a non-formal pattern of development. The way businesses are coming up, there's no formal pattern. You find a petrol station here, you find a carpentry next to it, you will find a tailor next there, you will find these village shops there. So there's no pattern. Even in Kampala here, even in Jinja, which used to be the industrial town of Uganda, there's no pattern. It used to be there when they were still designing the town, which has now become a city. But these things were lost. What is the point here to learn? is as a young entrepreneurial mind you can walk in anywhere and start your enterprise and start moving on the business landscape in uganda is also characteristic of a lot of informalities informalities informal they are informal businesses informal and many of them are not in the categories that the Uganda Revenue Authority would say like a value-added tax registered. They are informal. They are not registered, in other words. Now, in a business sense, the different business forms are multinationals. Those are the huge companies that they operate across countries. The next ones are uh, public limited liability companies. Those are the big companies with the hundreds of shareholders, which are few in Uganda. We have private companies. These are companies that have uh, possibly between, according to the law, between seven and 50 people, but they are mainly closed. They don't attract people to come in and be part of the business. They are few in Uganda. Then the other form of business are uh, cooperatives. Cooperatives. The cooperatives used to be a very vibrant business form in this country. In the 1960s, 70s, the form of business was cooperatives, agro-related, transport-related, housing-related, produce-related. I'm sure many young people now have not heard much of cooperative societies, but possibly what we hear is Bugis Cooperative Union, it's still running, I think. There used to be a very huge one, Banyankore Kuetera and a cooperative union. History now. A very big one of West Uganda Cooperative Union, West Mengo, Masaka Cooperative Union, Bunyoro Cooperative Union, Lango Cooperative Union, everywhere. These were huge business forms that attracted farmers to pull their resources together, that attracted producers to pull their resources together and to support each other. And that's why some people are not poor because they were belonging to those. Now today, we are talking about circles. 
as a form of business that is coming up in terms of microfinancing. Which I'm not going to the depth, but I would encourage young people, our Catholic young people, whether at a parish level, whether at a village level, to consider forming these circles. Savings, credit, you know, you borrow from there, you get small loans, you contribute. They are very important. They are coming up. They may not be on the scale of the cooperatives I'm talking about of history, but these circles are very important. Do not be on, on your own. We are talking about self-reliance. We are talking about entrepreneurship. You may not have the money to start, but you can edge your chances along these circles. And our Catholic identity is one way which can bring us together. You can form a, a circle at a parish level and it can attract all the youth according to your level. Contributions can be as minimum as 10,000 per month, 5,000 per month. You are 100 youth, each one is putting 5,000 per month. How much is coming into the pocket of the circle per month? And after three months, how much can you borrow from that? It can be available. So let's, let's look at this. These are entrepreneurial issues that we must look at for self-reliance. The other form of business are partnerships where two or more people come together, they agree to run business. According to the law, partnerships can be in word or written. And if it's written, you streamline, you put down what is called the partnership deed, the things that you do together, who is doing what, and what are the contributions. You may find one contributes some money, another contributes a border border a bicycle, Another one could be something else, and that is the capital. By the way, when you talk about capital, dear friends, we do not talk about money alone. And that's what has deluded many young people. I don't have capital, we don't have capital, and we want money. Capital is not money. In business language, capital is anything that can be put into a, a business idea to grow it. It might be a vehicle, it might be a bicycle, it might be a house, it might be an idea, I mean, uh, uh, knowledge. For example, you can be three young people. One has a border border, another one has a garden, another one has a skill, a knowledge. Those are different contributions towards capital. The one of border border says, me, I'm giving my border border. Another one says, I have a, a small room in the trading center. Then another one says, may I have the mind, I have the time, for you are too busy. Me, I will give the time to be running to using the border border, to be running around into the gardens, to buy raw maize. We put in our room in the, in the trading center, we dry it, we wait for the roll to come, we sell, we make a difference. That's how you can start. That's partnership. But the principal partnership is trust. And I will emphasize towards the end that one of the characteristics that we Catholic youth must cultivate is trust. We have become too jumpy, too and trustworthy. Many people will abuse the youth that the youth of these days you are not trustworthy. Let's prove them wrong by doing some of the things we are talking about. In the past, people used to be so trustworthy without writing, without even technology. But today there is too much lie. You agree with someone, let's meet the person, he does not come. You are, and in the business, you can't have that kind of thing. If you say, let's meet at 10, but someone says, ah, he comes at 12 p.m., you have, you know, that mistrust. I think Catholic youth, let's be different. Let's arise and walk. Let's be on the move. Let's go by what he's saying. Young people, I tell you, up. That up is also, as you get up, I want to emphasize as we go to leave this theme, as you get up, drop all the things that are making you to fail to get up. And what are the things that are failing us to get up, to be on the move? Lack of values, jealousy, you know, laziness. So as you arise, as young people, I tell you, get up. Please, as you are getting up, leave laziness down. Leave jealousy down. Leave confusion down. Leave selfishness down. That is when you will be able to do what? To arise. Young man, I tell you, arise. Leave those things down. And as you leave them down, start opening your eyes for these entrepreneurial opportunities that we are talking about. Now, the last form of business that is commonest across the country 
are what we call sole proprietorships. Sole proprietorships are the one man on one person. Ah, gender issues. Yesterday we had a talk on gender by Commission Angela. One person business. One woman, we have not yet called them one woman. One person business is better. So this is the sole proprietorship. Now the sole proprietorship, the one person business is mainly at family level, using family labor, largely informal, not registered, you know, too much registration possibly. They are not registered. But they survive. They survive. They are the shops and all small businesses that stream across the country. But within that landscape, the studies that were made, 2009, 2010, discovered something that has bothered the world, that Uganda is the most entrepreneurial country in the world. We published that as Makere University Business School, where I work. There was a study across the country, across Africa, across the other developing India, Sri Lanka, name them, and Uganda was found to be the most entrepreneurial country in the world. When these results were published, people said hey, Uganda, and actually some Western scholars started coming to see what is in Uganda that is making Uganda the most entrepreneurial country in the world. And indeed they proved that Uganda is very entrepreneurial. You walk across the landscape I've just explained. You walk across, you'll find everywhere a small business. Even as we are seated here, those of you who are physically here, some of you could be having some things in the pockets there that uh, during break time, you say, now I'm selling some masks here. That is the, how entrepreneurial Uganda is, which is not in many countries. However, however, it was also discovered by the same study that 70% of those enterprises fail within the first year. They do not see their first birthday. And that is what is bothering this country. 70% of the enterprises in Uganda do not celebrate their first birthday. Of those which celebrate their birthday, 62% do not celebrate their fifth birthday. Of the 30%, another 62 or 67, there are different statistics according to the size that different people have studied. Generally, between 60 and 70, that's what we usually take it academically to avoid the, the margin of error to be quoted. Because we have studied different. Someone looks at only fabricators, another one looks at only uh, abrogated shops, another one looks at this. So when you combine them, you discover that each one of them has a different mortality rate. But in general, between 60 and 70 percent of enterprises in Uganda do not see their first birthday. And of those which survive, 60, again, 70% do not celebrate their fifth birthday. Therefore, there is a high mortality rate of enterprises in Uganda. Yet we are the most entrepreneurial country in the what? In the world. There is a problem. And the dear young people listening to us this morning, let's try to get the best of how to get our enterprises to see the third, the fifth, the seventh and the eighth birthday. Where do we where do we come in as Catholic youth, as young people, with all these energies that we have? We want to appreciate these things that uh, govern your your starting of an entrepreneurial mind. Three things. It's a model that we are trying to build academically. I'm not going to it because it's still be under academic discussion. I call it the 3M, the 3M model, where one M is money, the second M is market, the third M is management. That is the 3M model. We are still testing it academically for it to become adopted across the country and across worldwide. That's how we, we do our things we, in academics. Now the 3M for this purpose of this discussion this morning, in young man I tell you arise, 
is as you arise to become self-reliant, to start an enterprise, to be have an entrepreneurial mind, the first thing is the money that we always talk about. Money, 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 money. But I've just mentioned that money, capital, can also be in the form of other intangibles or tangibles other than the financial bit of it. So as we talk about money to start, let's look at what knowledge we have, what contacts do we have, all those are capital. What structures can we request? You find you have an uncle who has a shop in, the, in your small town in Paida. He has a, a, musical, a, a room he doesn't use, or it is mina, minimally used. You say, uncle, can I use this room? But you must have been a good young man to him. That's the principle he was talking about. But if you abused him one time, or you refuse to do his work at one time, even if he's a brother of your father or a brother of your mother, he will say, my room would rather be there than this. You see that? Yes. Yeah. So the first principle is as we arise, we must drop some of those bad things that people are talking about, the young people. Please do not be part of the young people they are abusing, who are uh, confused, who have all these bad manners. Do not be part of it. Our national youth leader, you are here, and your team. In your term of office, cultivate the youth. The environment is trying, is demanding, is confusing them. But young people, wherever you are listening now, they arise clean in order for us to be self-reliant. And in being self-reliant, you will definitely get people who can support you. So, money. The second one is market. In real business, what drives an entrepreneurial mind is market. In this case, I'm not talking about the marketplace. I'm talking the market in the form of potential. People who are likely to buy your thing. Who is likely to buy? Who is likely to buy? And where is he? Where is she? How much money is that person with in the pocket? I, I usually I have addressed many entrepreneurs, those who are doing business, you know, they at times come and we talk to them and I usually tell them that uh, people have money and I usually tell them that uh, you know uh, there are some enterprises under Stanbic incubator we usually talk to them and they are these people who are in business they are really enterprises with medium, small and medium enterprises so they come and so when I talk to them I tell them you people do you know that I have money in my pocket and indeed they have money yes. those who are here you can say have money you get that? But how do you get this money from my pocket? It's not offered to you. <laughs> it's not offered to you. You have to get this money from my pocket. And they used to tell them, you people, I'm telling, talking to you, even you here as you listen to me, I have money in my pocket. Now, how do you get that money from my pocket? People have money. We who are physically here, a few of us, if we said now, I was about to say something wrong, but uh, now that <laughs> we are in the church, I was about to say if a crook came and said, you people, either you are death or money. Let's not talk about that. But if uh, the spirit came to us and said, let's pull all our money here, you know you can have a million from a few of us who are here. Not so. You people have a lot of money in your pockets. But now if I'm in, how, if, how do I get this money from your pockets? I must first understand you. I must first say either you are thirsty, you need some juice, or you, you are, you, we are, those who are writing, you know, we are putting down notes, but you can see some people are regretting why they not come with a pen, so you can dash out and in a few minutes you come with a pen, and each pen you buy there 500 and yet is 1,000, because that person will not negotiate, he's missing the presentation, <laughs> he wants to, you get that? It's understand it. So I, I want young people, wherever you are listening from, whenever you are working, wherever you are, have an entrepreneurial eye. Try to see what opportunity is here. As we said, behind that uh, opportunity, there is risk. Take advantage of it. There's nothing smooth in business. 
All right? So where do we get business ideas from? Uh -huh. The third M. The third M is the biggest problem in this country. There's a word which we usually commonly use it, but less understood. That's the word management, and I will use it in small ways. I will talk about management in terms of arranging your business, managing, I mean, looking for information in your business, coordinating your business, working with other people in a small business, carrying out tasks in a small business, and that is the biggest problem we have in this country. We have poor management. Many people have invested money. The market is there. The business falls in the other 70%. After one year, it has failed. You see what happened. You see, you know, you understand. Things are failed. We do not commit our time to business. We do not commit our resources to business. We do not commit our mind to business. And many young people have been disappointed as you know, we shall talk about this later, the government gives money as part of Entandiqua, as a seed capital, those businesses fail. Where is the problem? The problem is not the money, the money is there, the market is there, the problem is how do we run our businesses. So that is for those who are in business. But for the starters, for the starters, where do we get business ideas? Where do business ideas come from? Business ideas come from talks of this nature. This type of talk is part of it. So please attend these talks when you hear them. And these days, I want to emphasize, COVID is bad, but it has brought new good things. Too many available opportunities online to attend meetings and workshops. And many of you have smartphones, but if I checked your smartphone, the things you keep accumulating there, talking these political fights about what your MBs are wasted in downloading these, these political games that we are looking at in the country. And you know how much we are spending on those downloads of those things. I don't want to mention them here. But how many of you are downloading Zoom opportunities for meetings? And they are there. There are many Zoom meetings of presentations Many banks, many institutions are organizing Zoom meetings on business opportunities. Many universities. You, you should be getting this. We should form a national Catholic youth platform. And on this platform, we should not post these stupid things. That at times when I see someone inviting me to, to join a platform, my first thing is please and please and please do not forward those things. By the time you forward it to me, I have already forwarded it to another person. So don't do it. Whenever you get something, don't be proud that I'm forwarding it, I'm the first person. The person you are forwarding to has already forwarded it to another person. So you are doing nothing. Don't waste your MBs. So if you have such a platform, let it be for entrepreneurial development, spiritual development, and avoid posting these things of other, which we can get on other platforms. So please attend the sessions. When you hear some workshops, sessions, be there. I've already emphasized the two of them. One I have emphasized is the observation, walk around, and start opening your mind. Young people, if you are free, walk around the community. At times, ideas strike when you are walking. When you see, when you feel, go to the market. Not to, you may not be going to trade, but just go to the market. If there is a small market in Nakasomura, that's your home. Go to the market just to see what is going on there. By the time you come back, you are striked by an idea. You are challenged, you are disturbed. All right? Important also as a source of business idea is reading. And I'm emphasizing reading because we have all smartphones. Many young people have smartphones, but you are reading wrong things. On your smartphone, you can access the New Vision business section. I usually tell people that when people buy the New Vision, they look at the front page to see the politics there. In the past, it used to be Dr. Vesige, whenever you, people read that, they, they, they skip several pages, they go behind and look at Arsenal versus Man U. The New Vision has, is finished. The important pages are in the middle there. There are middle pages there. They are not interesting to read if you want to be interested, I mean if you want to read for interest. 
issues about business, future articles about what business are doing. Start reading them if you can access the newspapers. I know many young people do not. That is where businesses, business ideas are, and you can access many of them there. Online sources. Online sources. Google these things on these smartphones. You people, let's use these smartphones to be self-reliant. People are posting too many things at times to say, my goodness. Me, I take more time deleting them every other day. People post them. You can't hang yourself. What I do, I hang them. I take his time off to delete. I say delete everything there because I don't need it. Scroll and delete. Some of you keep them as unread. You may find your WhatsApp has about 1,000 and read things. They are wasting your phone when it will be getting the business things that are helping you to grow. What is also very important in getting business ideas is exposure. Move out and see. We are too closed. All right. What are the success factors? What are the success factors in being self-reliant, in starting enterprises? There are many factors, but I just mentioned a few for purposes of today. I have already mentioned the issue of trust. Trust is a success factor in business, in entrepreneurial mind. If you have a business idea, an entrepreneurial idea, and you are not trustworthy, you are jumpy, 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 your business will fade as jump as you are. You will be part of the 70%. The other success factor that is very important, and I've already mentioned it to it, so I don't go back to it, is what you call social capital. Contacts, networks, knowing people. Knowing people is very, very important. It's an asset that we take, we take less advantage of. To know people, it's a big one. So as youth, I mentioned this even when we were in Kasana Ruweru the other year. I said, now you young people, you are all gathered here. Don't live here without a contact, a phone contact of someone. You never know what business idea you can have, and you want to trade it in Kisoro. You say, now who is in Kisoro, my goodness? Who is in Kisoro? And it can ease your life. By have, because we are a network of youth, we should be a, take advantage of this. And I take pride that during my youth days, when I was in the youth leadership, as you people are, I traveled almost around this country, and I know almost every friend in this country. If I was going to any diocese, we are young people now, we are old. But almost every, every part of this country, and Africa as a whole, by the way, as part of the youth work. So do not grow up, take advantage of these contacts, of these networks. You should know someone in Moroto when you come to a National Youth Council conference, someone in Barara, someone in Masaka, someone in, you know, across the country. So it's a very big success factor. The other very important factor is personality. An outgoing personality. Business ideas grow by outgoing people. When you get a business idea, as I've just mentioned, where you get it from reading and blah, blah, and you sit back and start regretting, you see me, myself, and my, oh, it will never grow. Be outgoing. Talk to people. Interact with people. Mention anything stupid outside there to people. And when people correct you in the courts, then you are starting to shape your mind. You know, we get degrees, but at times they don't help us. Because we are still not outgoing to share the information and to do, to do this. Of course, and importantly, a key success factor to any enterprise is the funding. The funding. We need money. We need the source of capital. And so let me expound a little on that. What are the sources of funding that you can use to be self-reliant? Sources of funding. I have already mentioned Pulling in circles. Pulling. P -O, o. Pull. Bring together the little you have as a Catholic youth group at a parish level, diocesan level, village or community level. Let's pull the little we have because each one of us might not have enough to start. But when you pull it together in these simple circles, it can start pushing us better. And we can do that. We have the spirit, we have the zeal we can be able to do that. Of course, we have microfinance institutions all over the country, but uh, just understand their interest rate, how much they are charging. You know money is costly. 
Money costs a lot. One of the expensive items is money in the business language. Money is a, as a product is very costly because you pay for it. So microfinances are over the place. We have commercial banks if you can walk in there. And most of the commercial banks today have started opening up products for small enterprises. People who, the micro, micro borrowers. So do not fear those banks. Do not look at Centenary Bank, our own, and say, no, me, who, who am I to go to Centenary Bank to get a loan? People who go to Centenary Bank get millions of lo uh, in loans. No. They have the products for small enterprise, where they can give to you a loan of 50000 100000 And of course, against the trust that I've said, you are able to use it to pay back, and you can start growing like that. They have those products. And of course, we have a big one, which is the government. Government has taken a lot of initiative with the youth funding, youth livelihood projects. I don't know how many Catholic youth benefited from this. You may find many of our sisters and brothers from other who are a bit faster in, in doing things. Now the current talk is about a MIOGA, which is a, a capital funding by government. It has come around political times, but it's not very political, I understand. Take advantage of it, young people, wherever you are in this country. It is funding. You just need to form a group. I think most of the countryside has had a lot of seminars on the FM radios, on the size of the group, type of business to be funded. Please take advantage. Let's not keep, you know, lamenting on this self-reliance. Take advantage. This man is there. It's coming. Don't relate it to politics. Whether you are putting on red or the other one is purple or green or... Take advantage of it. It's government money. It's not yellow money only. It's government money. Take advantage of it. Start it with an entrepreneurial mind to grow it. Do not go by the terms who are saying let us eat this political money. Let them eat it. They have, they have their own circles. For you may eat it and it brings you trouble. If the, the, the sample of the youth arrested. Yes, you know, a hundred youth can get money, they all eat it, but they pick about three to sample to the others that, uh, and you might be the sample. So take advantage of it and use it to grow. This, this funding is there in the government, and so please take advantage. Of course, we also have, we used to have a lot of donor funding supporting young people and whatever, but it's declining, so we must be self reliant. Now, in talking about this self-reliance, what, what are the best business ideas? I, 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 uh, the Uganda Investment Authority has done some kind of documentation and the Uganda Microfinance Institution trying to show the capital required to do business. And I just want to highlight a few here. Now, they are saying the business opportunities according to funding. If you have between 30,000 to 150,000 Uganda shillings. Between 30,000 and 150,000 Uganda shillings, you can run the following businesses, just a few. Selling vegetables. Do not sell selling vegetables. How do I start selling vegetables? You can sell them. Because of the COVID, the healthy people are telling us to eat greens and whatever and fruits. People are looking for avocados now, they cannot not get them. Jack of fruits, vegetables, greens. Young person, rise up in your community in Kisoro. Get greens, make them tidy very well, be different. Put them in very good buveras, get good peppers, wrap them very well. Stand on the roadside and sell these greens because people are looking for them as part of the immunity building. And you need 30,000 to 150,000 to get them from the gardens where they are, they are rotting. A uh, car wash business, a group of young people, you can put up a car wash, washing business. You just need to convince someone who has a car plot near a swamp or a water point, and you say, with the Catholic youth in this village, want to start up a business? If you are in a town where there is the, the, where there are cars, youth in Busia, you can set, put up this. Youth in Soroti, youth in Yumbe, where there are cars of NGOs, and they come from those villages where they are all dirty and they are looking for where to wash them, and it is in, uh, the youth are there. 
You on your smartphone watching where the red man has been harassed today and downloading many videos and wasting MBs, looking for money for MBs when there is a business opportunity in your midst. You need 30,000 according to this study. Photography, but now photography, technology has made photography a bit down because people now take pictures using smartphones. They are in the local breed chicken. Local breed chicken. People are looking for those chickens, the traditional ones. How much do you need to get bamboo, wood, put an enclosure around, put three of them there, 30,000, and you start rearing them. Free, free lands. You don't bring maize brand or whatever to them. They know what they eat from the ground. This is it. You need 30,000 to 150,000. Making simple snacks, simple snacks, make a different chapati in the community. So that people come to you, be smart. The problem we have in, in Uganda also, people are not smart. The other day, I actually, I took the advantage to tell some young man who was selling me some food along the way. You know, like you stop at these trading centers. I said, why can't you be smart? Sincerely, your wakora is so dirty that even the chapati you are holding looks dirty to me. <laughs> the young man just walked away. He just met a crazy driver. Yes. Be smart, different. And you can do this. You can sell these pancakes, the kabaragaras, smart ones, good ones, and people will come for them. Now you want to say, hey, I have a degree out where I sell kabaragaras. My goodness, this is not what we are talking about here. We are talking about self-reliance and survival. Roasted chicken, soya, simsim, -sim, 30,000 to 150,000. All right, another category. If you have 300,000 to 2 million, what can you set up? You can set up a barber shop. Kinyozi. Barber shop. You can set up a saloon. Like ladies' saloons will never fail to have market. You're all right. They are always with market. So get that skill. A simple grocery. Now you are moved from selling vegetables, you are put up vegeta I mean vegetables, vegetables, Apples, pineapples, into a grocery. And this grocery, as I said, in the landscape of business in Uganda, is not a big shop. It's just a wooden structure. Alongside where you know people are passing. Just a wooden structure. You can get that space. Someone can rent you that space. Even someone can say, hey, you want to use this, this plot of mine? You have saved me. It is always bushy. Go to your trading centers in the village. And see how many, uh, how many plots are uh, bush, and the owner is uh, always told that this is becoming a den of thieves. And we just say, I want to help you to maintain this clean. Trust, you must have trust. If you, the person says that please use this plot, use it for two years, and then you start seeing how can I own it, then you are going to be in trouble with the hair of the, when the old man has gone. Ah, uh, selling. Merchandise, handbags, clothes, shirts. You can specialize in your trading center in the children's wear at uh, one million, and which you can get from uh, a mioga. You can uh, process agro products, honey. People from uh, our diocese in uh, Guru Ach Diocese, Guru, Pro Guru Province, there's honey there. Process it. Get it in a very good way. Pack it in small things. Over 1,000, 2,000. You can make some little money. Packing meat, you know, agro products. You can even pack these simple uh, direct fruits like uh, the, the, the pineapples, fresh, and people will eat them. So please, let's have these ideas. If you can get 5 million and above, if you can get 5 million to 10 million, you can do the following. You can start a restaurant, a food restaurant. You can start a pub. You can have a, a hotel at uh, 5 to 15 million, 10 million. You can have laundry services. Actually, this laundry, they are in the two. They are the laundry which you can do with 30,000 to wash people's clothes. There are some young people who have made money around the universities washing people's clothes, students' clothes. In a very smart way. And you make money there. So these, these are ideas. Uh, we have already talked about uh, a car washing bay. You can expand it here. 
you make a you you are a group of youth some uh, an old man in the town where there are many cars uh, either offers you or rents you uh, i mean says use this plot you agree two of you will be running the wash bay one will be running a shoe shining another one will put up a cup up there someone parks there to have his car washed when his shoes are being worked on when he's sipping something and another one is making a small fried chicken there this is it and you are young man you collect all the money together you start pulling you must have trust and you can grow so dear friends these are some of the business ideas that you can have upon the other success factors that i've talked about but what are the best practices i want to again uh, remind those online please send your uh, comments your experiences and then we shall shortly have the time to to hear from them and share the experiences as i said this is not a lecture where it's me 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 talking no we want to share ideas i'm just igniting the talk and the discussion what are the best practices dear friends young people if you are going to be self-reliant and enterprising and setting up some enterprises to grow you must have customer care that is one value that has eroded eluded it is eroded about eluding uh -huh, these are english things now it is eluding many people customer care in the business we say the customer is king nearly before him in Uganda, you know when they talk about the kabaka the king you know what the baganda will do that's the first example in the business the customer is the king he's the reason why your business is there as i said at the start understand the person for whom you are going to make money the person who actually business is about pulling money from people's pockets so your work is to pull money out of my pocket but how do you do it you must entice me give me the care some people this is it i want to look at that okay can't you sit from a distance someone has come from your shop to your shop can i look at that pair of trousers can't you look at it from a distance that is what you are telling a customer my goodness you get that customer care i usually tell many people i talk to about to the customer care i got to years ago i went downtown in kampala and you know i at that time as university students they were giving us allowances in the 1990s some money to travel back home to be happy so they had paid us to return home after the term. These were the semesters were not there. So I had some good money as a student and I was going to the village and I wanted to go and please all my nephews and nieces with the clothes from Kampala. So I went downtown to buy those supplies to take home with me. So I found the, those selling clothes around there. So I told the man, I want some shirts. He said, this is your size. I said, no, I want like my size. At that time, I think it was 14 or 15. He insisted. I said, no, I want this size. And he said, don't you see this one? Me, I know. I know you. This is what uh, I said. You have just seen me. I have known myself for many years. <laughs> he said, ah, you are just a muyaya. You did not come to buy. That's what he told me. This is not a story of once upon a time a man married his wife. It is real. <laughs> So he said, ah, you did not want to buy. These are university, you know, campuses. You think all of us went to university to bring such rugezgez here? I moved from him to the next one. And I bought eight shirts from the next person. And the next one said, Wama come. How much? Um, what did you want? What size? Whom are you buying? Is it yours? The, and he talked to me very well. I bought eight shirts when the next one was sitting there. He looked stupid. But because of simple word, customer what? Customer care. And I usually tell business people, if you do not have something in your shop, do not tell the customer you don't have it. Those of you who have gone to Kampala, there are two ways. Either tell the person, go here on your right, down there, you'll get it. That customer, you have not sent him away. Next time you tell him, next week, next time I'll have it. Next time that person will not go there, surprising he will come to you. He will not go where he bought it. He will come to you, the person who sent him where it was. The, enterprise, the entrepreneurs in Kampala are very sharp. And I like them for that. 
They say just a minute. He goes just behind there, buys it at 50,000, and comes and says they have said 70,000. It is very scarce. You say, I don't have it myself here. I went here, it was not there. I got it from there, 70,000. You thank him for having been very kind to you. And then he, you, you, you pay. Yes. Never send away customer. Never send away customer. This is how you can. So these are best practices. Record keeping. Very important in the business. Keep records. Know the, the prices. You may not be using those things, but know the prices. Keep records. We are very poor at keeping records. Get receipts. Get things. Write them down. Keep your business. At times, some people say, when you overkeep records, they make you unhappy because you see how the business is not doing well. No. On the contrary, keep records. Keep, record keeping is very important. Even in agriculture, some people keep records of how many eggs have been laid by a black hen, how many by a white one. It helps you in the decision making. The other very good, uh, I mean, the best practice is hygiene. Hygiene. In my own village, in my community, deep somewhere in Bunyoro, I have gone to teach the people in my community. And I tell them, your shops are dirty. You are selling mandas, but uh, uh, flies are around the shop, sincerely. And you can keep it clean. Hygiene matters. You are selling uh, ripe bananas, the menvu, the bananas, the bogoyas. And of course, they get a bit of a ripened before they are bought. So they, they, they start attracting the fries, and the next to the basket of, of Bogoya are mandazis. Very well fried and still exciting. But when I come to buy the mandazi, the fry, the flies on the sincerely hygiene is very important in your business. So please, this is the best practice. Of course, hygiene goes with ambiance. You know, the surrounding, how nice it looks. The other best practice is getting right information. At times we have wrong information. And these WhatsApps have come with one problem, what we call over. Over. People are uh, over-informed. We call it information overload. We are overloaded with too much information. And some of this information is wrong. The four daily things I'm talking about. So please, in a good business, best practice is to seek and use the right information. The other very important, important best practice in the business is managing inventory or stock, to manage stock. Some of the things in the businesses expire. And when they expire, you know, you keep it there. You send someone a biscuit that is supposed to have been thrown away three months ago. Even if these orders, they expire at a time T. So manage the inventory. Manage the way you set up your, your business. And as we have said, the businesses, for those of you who are going to start, businesses start from the small ones I have talked about. But manage and know. Manage and know. If I come in and I ask, I want salt, and you have only one kilo, I wanted the two. Convince me to buy this one and then dash the next one to bring me the second one so that I don't go away. Don't tell me I have only one kilo. You wanted the two, possibly down there. The customer care was talking about. So, best practice is to manage your stock, your inventory, to keep records, to know it, and to have customer care. What are the characteristics of not, not of entrepreneurs as we study in class, but of the small starters? What should be the characteristic of the young person who wants to start a business from this simple talk here? Who is going to arise? Young man, rise up. Those of you who listen to me are going to rise up. What do you need? Commitment. Do not be jumpy if you want to be self-reliant. People who have grown in business have committed themselves to the enterprises and taken the time to grow them. But we are jumpy. Commitment is lacking in us. We say as if we are rushing. Let's rise and leave that rushing, impatience, and those other bad manners down as we arise. The second one you need is to be, to be a, a seeker, 
of information. Seek, a seek of information. Say, hey, I have heard about this. Is that right? I have heard about this. Seek information. Seek to know. People who do good business seek information. They want to know. They don't take anything for granted. The next one is, as young people, is discipline. And this is a broad word, but I'm taking this discipline at the basic, the way we do basic things. That discipline of doing things. When you say discipline, you look at it in the broad way of doing the simple things. Young people are missing some of these basic characteristics. The other one is, uh, we have already talked about trust. You must have trust. Do not trust others before you are trusted. You are the first person. Do not be, you know, do not have trust, but be trust yourself. It's very important. I have emphasized it all across uh, my, my presentation. And the, the other one, which is very, very important, if you are working as two, three young people, you have formed your business, be a team, play, a, a team player. Teamwork. Very important. Selfishness may not take us much. I've already mentioned to you that in the past, some people would come together without writing, and they start a business and grow it. You would find, uh, like uh, these transporters, these bus companies, used to be formed by people who would just come together. Kasamba transporters. Teamwork. Some one or two brothers come together, or friends. They agree and form a bus company. Because they are working together. No one is trying to cheat the other, taking advantage of the other. This would be very, very, very difficult. Now, in starting our entrepreneurial mind, uh, I want to mention one or two more things so that we have time for discussion and uh, our questions coming in. I have already emphasized, and let me repeat it now in a little more detail, assess the environment. Assess the environment. It's very important to assess where we are. When you want to develop a business idea, assess the environment. Will this idea work or not? Take the risk if it will work. Diversify or change if you must. Look at the different factors that you might need to consider. Like uh, right now, we are in a high political environment. It has two ways. It is a very good way to start some business and take advantage of this political environment. And you are sure January 20th, it will go down. Because the January 14th we elect, by 20th the results have come, the losers and winners are on different divides. There are some businesses which can be right now, assess the environment. There are some businesses which are not right to start right now, you can lose. You say now, this, given these political things, you put some kamani in this business, it could, it could lose. So, assess the environment all the time. The seasonalities of rain. If you want to start your uh, drift business in October, definitely you, are, you have not assessed the, what? the environment because the season is not for that. January could be good because of the dry season. But then you must also say, by much as it starts raining, what other diversification, what other business line can I go in which will support this one? Children are going to school. They usually go back January, Feb. What is the best business around there? Which will not be in March when they are all in school. Because no one is buying these things they take to school. You are in a community of youth. There are these white plants which make brooms. And the students are about to go back to school. Every parent has been in some schools, 30 parents to come with three brooms. And they are looking for them, they are not there. And your group of youth on WhatsApp checking where the red man has been harassed from. <laughs> Downloading many things there. This is being self reliant You can make a kill, as they say, in a short time, and that's it. Just look at all these things, dear friends. So please, look at those, the environment, understand the social, political environment, economically, how is the environment. Understand the cultural aspect of the thing. Because there are some cultures where some businesses will not thrive very well. They, they are there, they, they, they cannot. Uh, I remember in 1998, uh, 1998 we were 
I was in the master's class and they asked us to write business ideas. And one of our friends wrote a, a wild business idea. He says, you know what? I want to start in, 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 in Europe there, they do what they call funeral homes. I want to start a funeral home. I think he had started in the US. When he presented his business idea in class, people laughed. They said, you man, you want to start managing dead bodies in this country here? It was a surprise and uh, that was his business idea. Now, that's at the bigger level. But you know now, the big, the big key of business in the country now are a funeral what? Services. Funeral services. That idea was written by a colleague in class, 1998, in our master's class. And it's not business. Don't look at that big one. I brought it to inside you at the local level. What can be done? I don't want you to form a, a group of youth grave diggers. <laughs> <laughs> They will start saying, whoever dies, they say, ah, you see this youth who, who have started this business? You know the community culture. That's what I'm talking about. It can be a business. But when someone dies, they say, now, this youth who form the grave, you diggers, they will start letting you to every death in the what? So, culturally, that business cannot what? Cannot work down there. All right. Last is uh, monitoring your business idea. Monitoring your business idea. Let me start it from an idea. If you, are, if you still have a business idea, which even you are thinking of right now, monitor it up to the time it is a huge enterprise. Yes. I want to get feedback in five years that you know I started, I started a business idea when you talked on Radio Maria, on, uh, you know, Catholic Youth Live, on all these social media, that's when I got my business idea. And I have grown it into a large enterprise. Come and they give you a big cock, a chicken. Control, monitor your idea. A business idea is something very important. And your business is start from the idea. So when you get it, in, the, in the monitoring it, the first thing is to put it down. You know, these heads of ours have too many things. I usually always have a notebook somewhere, all the time. And anything crosses my mind, put it down. You never know. You know, at one time I can say, what did I think about? And you know you can get sick. Many of you, many of you uh, if you read Leadership Magazine, uh, you, I usually write in Leadership Magazine. I started writing in Leadership Magazine since 1984. 84, I was in senior three. And I wrote an article in the leadership magazine and, uh, you know, in the village, deep in the village, and I posted it and about a year later, they replied to me sending me a copy saying we received your article. So, after that, I've been writing. Like, I write every month. I've written in uh, every issue every month, 11 times a year from, I think, 1993 up to even now. Now, someone asked me, where do you get those ideas? Now, if those ideas, leadership magazine, I just write free. But there are some other academic things where I write for the money. In leadership magazine, I share my experience as a Catholic. But there are other write-ups where I put an article and uh, the next thing is a check. Now, where would you get those ideas from? Those ideas come across me, my mind, when I'm either sleeping, whether I'm in the toilet, whether I'm working, or wherever. And immediately crosses my mind, I put it in my diary, in my notebook. Because I can say, what did I remember to write about? And I can spend the whole day sick trying to record an idea. So if a business idea crosses your mind, jot it down and put that piece of paper somewhere. It can grow into a big business. If you have read the story of Shell, the two brothers who started Shell, how they got the idea and why they called it Shell. So please, you people with smartphones, Google the story of Shell. Why they called it shell and where that idea come, came from. Very simple idea strikes you and there you are. You get that. So put it down. Monitor your business idea. And when you start looking for money, looking for space, looking for facilities, monitor that idea. Do not abandon the idea. Until it is a huge enterprise, do not, do not abandon it. And in doing that, what you need, very important also, is to manage to plan your resources. A resources, money, time. You know, I, I don't want to talk about money because we know how to manage money. 
But you know we misuse time. We mismanage time. About 10 years ago, with colleagues at the McKay University Business School, we carried out a study and they discovered that people do not manage the time. People waste a lot of time. We have time as a resource, but we mismanage it. And it's very critical in business. Now you know time these days has become a paid resource because of these technologies. So manage the resources, manage the time, manage the space very well. If, as we said, your uncle gives you the space to say, I'm giving you the space to do what you want there, manage that space very well. If you have got any, a Casimoro Pro to start a wash bay as a, a group of youth, manage it very well, make it tidy, put flowers around it, ambience that we are talking about. If it is money, manage it well. Know the priorities to spend on. Money is very costly, it's very expensive. And so when you get it, use it very well. If you have a skill, which is a resource, use it very well. Do not waste the resources. Many of you young people listening to me have gone to school and have been taught a lot of things. Use that very well. And so, in a nutshell, there are friends listening to me across the world to be self-reliant and to be entrepreneurial involves rising from a position. That's why the theme is very important for me. It involves moving from one position to another. Today in the government, they call it the change theory, the theory of change. That word is becoming common in government. Everyone's talking about the theory of change. So it involves change. It involves rising up. So I want to emphasize to you, rise up. Young man, young woman, I tell you, stand up, rise up. Look out there and see how you can be self-reliant. The needs are many, and we can no longer depend on our parents, on our employers. We can no longer depend on our supporters, donors. We must be self-reliant by taking advantage of the numerous entrepreneurial opportunities across there. We take advantage with them, with, of course, the risk related. Finally, I have mentioned this hundreds of times, that as a, a professor of business, Catholic, breeded by the youth apostolate, I always offer freely my availability in terms of knowledge, in terms of skills, where there is any church group, wherever you are, if you want me to come and talk to the youth, if you want to talk to, uh, to, talk to you in your group, in your parish, in your diocese, I'm just a call away. Just do one thing. Do one thing. Tell me in time. My diary is always full. If you wanted me now, today is the ninth. If you wanted me next weekend on the 15th, you are in loss. If I check my diary, the next weekend I might be free is February 12th. And so you must let me in time. You don't need to pay me to come. Jesus has enabled me to do that, and I will come on my own. I thank you very much, and I encourage you to, young man, rise, stand up, let's be self-reliant, let's be entrepreneurial, let's be on our own. I thank you very much. <clears throat> well, thank you very much, our dear facilitator. At uh, this point moment, I would take this in a special way to thank you. Uh, let's give him once a uh, mighty hand clap. Uh, well, uh, we are going to have this time for the jotted questions and answers. Uh, this is a room for the discussion. Uh, before we come to the summary in Luganda, I uh, would we'll take this opportunity to welcome one of the youth leaders to come and have a word of appreciation. You're most welcome. Thank you very much. Allow me to take this opportunity really on behalf of the entire youth, not only in this country but worldwide, to thank our dear professor for the word he has given us. Really, 
we need to arise we need to arise arise to business we need to arise to be entrepreneurs thank you very much thank you very much we deserve more professors like you especially in our our youth ministry and we thank you for the promise you've given to us that whenever we call you you will always be there and i think for every for every meeting we have been having as national youth leaders he has been there he is our role model you are our eye really you are a good example you are our elder we are proud of you and we shall always be proud of you thank you very much may god bless you may god bless you and you keep with us thank you the lord is good all and all the time I always say, Professor, you are our elder in the youth ministry. He has been our role model. If some of us are struggling to be in what we are, it's because of Vincent and his team. Now, um, we have some comments, Professor, that are coming from our Ugandan Catholic platform in Radio Maria. The first comment is from Matthias. Matthias says, Professor, you are right. Businesses do not see their first birthday because a lot of dynamics is involved. And because of that, they lack proper management and stamina to hang on because they're always swayed away because of all the struggles within the entrepreneurship uh, system. And then we have uh, Nama Tovo uh, Chopista on Facebook, she's saying, Competition is healthy in business because it helps us to value our clients and handle them well. I think she was trying to re-echo the aspect of where you were saying we should be nice to our customers and know them well and always be warm to them. And then from Anna Mkwaya on Facebook, she's saying, great my lecturer for management. I think your students are, have also been following you on, on online. This is very positive. Felix on WhatsApp. Here, Professor, you need to take attention. It's a question. Is it okay to start a business with a loan? And Sam Kizito on WhatsApp. How long does it take to gain all start to get profits with some of the businesses that have taken a long time to catch up. So those are, some are appreciation comments while others are questions. Maybe you can start with that and then we'll also organize for you more of the questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, the young people, for listening in, uh, for showing that uh, you have followed the, the discussion, and for having been uh, tickled to think deeper into your own entrepreneurial mind. I'll give just a, a quick comment and response to what has been said. Let me start with one word that I have mentioned many times, one phrase, that if you are in business, never wish your competitor to die. And that's very common. I wish that competitor dies. No. Never wish your competitor to die. Wish him good life because he's the reason you can do better in your business. So take advantage of your competitor. Just understand who your competitors are and model your business to be best. So your competitors are, competition is heresy. Actually now today, I don't want to go into academics. You don't have the time and the, uh, the, the, the spirit around is not for academics. But today in academics, we are saying the end of competitive advantage. Many businesses used to start with competitive advantage. And the commonest competitive advantage was the location. 
to do location is no longer an advantage. Actually, in some cases, location is a disadvantage. I'll give you an example of petrol stations. Today, if you locate a petrol station on a highway and you say, I have gained this location, very good one, you do not own it unless you decide to buy all the square kilometer around yourself. But if you are put it on the right, in a few minutes, there will be one on the left of a highway. And they saw the vehicles you were tapping from two angles, uh, you have now remained with only one what? Direction. And it is common. When you start, uh, when you start a barber shop, you know, either a saloon, as we have said in our, in our ability, unless you decide to buy the whole building and they say no one shall put a saloon here, you put it here, the next day, you see the next room, they are tightening, tight, tightening it. You say, ah, is it a restaurant? The next day you peep there, you will see those heady things there. A business has come next to you. Do not wish that person to die. Just tune your business in ambience, in customer care, in welcoming, in putting better things to attract. You can even put some things there, a small cost of attracting the customers by putting there a bottle of water. You know, the ladies spend a lot of time there. Put a bottle of water. At 1,000, you are attracting better customers than your neighbor. A TV for people to see as they wait for your service. So these are the things, dear friends. So competition is normal. Never wish a customer to, buy, to die. Is it okay to start a business with a loan? Yes and no. Yes, because loans, loans are a source of funding. Loans are available. Loans are everywhere the place. Actually, today, people are, asking, the people are looking for, for customers for loans. Even the big banks, which, which used to be proud that will come to us, now they are coming to people. We have loans. We have school fees loan, we have business loans. Now they used to give big loans, now they are giving even small ones, micro loans. So it is okay to start a business with a loan. Many big businesses have started with loans. Loans are available, loans can be accessed, but when you start with a loan, be trustworthy, manage the loan very well, put it in a well understood business, be committed to your enterprise, do not get a loan and abandon it there. Abandon the loan. Manage the money. Manage the loan. It will be productive. Pay back. Pay back. Get more. Pay back before they look for you. There are many microfinance institutions that are looking for people to arrest them because they borrowed it, they have not paid back. Many microfinance institutions country where they are suffering with, uh, with borrowers who are not paying back. And what borrowers are doing, you go to uh, X, you borrow. Then when, uh, when X was, you go to Y, you borrow. You go to this one, you borrow. Multiple borrowing has become a problem across the country. Do not be entangled in multiple borrowing. Borrow once, grow the business, pay back the loan, get more and more. Do not get engaged in multiple borrowing. You are going to be imprisoned by the loans. You are going to be entangled in loans and your business will fail, your business idea will not grow. On the other hand, it's not good to start a business with a loan. Because a loan is a cost. And you do not hold the factors constant that the loan will bring profits. And the most likely it will fail and your business will fail and you will have to sell your chicken in order to pay the loan. But the option that can only occur when you have the option. And what are the options? To get a personal saving, to get a, a relative, a friend who can give you money and you, you run the enterprise, if you can do that. The other option are donor funds, which is not there. Government funds, which are uh, not loans, but they are, you know, they are part of capital to, you know, to support the people. These are available. But the best option to avoid the loan, and the Indian business people do it, but among Africans who have not done it, is what you call credit factoring. You get to a big shop, you show trust, you show I'm committed, someone who gives you merchandise, you come and sell. You, whatever you get, you pay back. 
you pay for the, the goods, you come and put more, you take back. In about a month or two or a year, you find your own stock when you started without a loan. You start to begin with minimal to put up the, the premises and the contacts. That's why I talked about the contacts. If you have a good person you know in the community, either these politicians or these religious leaders, someone can say, no, this young man, I have known him, he's trustworthy, he will grow the business. And someone can give you a stock of 10 crates of soda from, you know, these uh, uh, wholesalers, these uh, big shops, where those who bring a roll of soda in your village, in Kavira Maido. You go there, he gets you five crates for you put them on a bicycle. You go in the community, you sell them, you come and pay for the five crates. He gives you six, you come and pay. He gives you eight, you come and pay. After, by the time you reach 30, 35, the difference you are making, you have accumulated capital. It is a very common way of financing business without going into a loan. You must be trustworthy, you must have grown your values, you must have a reason, you must have risen up without those bad manners of cheating, of telling lies, of, you know, confusing, switching off the phone when the person is calling you and telling lies, my grandmother died. Uh, people kill grandmothers every day. You reach a point where even the grandmothers are finished and you can no longer lie that, you know, I couldn't pick your phone, I'm going to bury my grandmother. So please, that's very important. At what point does a business make profit? In the Ugandan, in our studies, uh, in the technical language, uh, the, the, we have two types of costs that you meet in business. We have what you call fixed costs. The things you must pay for, whether the business is running or not. And then variable costs, the things you pay for only when the business is in operation. The example is rent. When you have rented the room, whether you are using it or not, you pay. On the other hand, power. If you have switched off power because it is night time, you don't pay. Now, the two, the two costs, those costs which you are paying only when you are in operation, and the, those which are fixed, they meet at a given point. And the point at which they meet is called the break-even point. Break-even point. Now, the break-even point is the point at which you are making no, no extra money from the business and you are not making any loss at all. Now, that point could come in a year, in two years, or in three years. Some businesses have run for 10 years. They have not yet met the break-even point. But the owners have not run out of business because they keep trying. Commitment I talked about, resilience. So those are very important. So the break-even point, academically we can calculate it. I can come to your business, you tell me how much you are selling, how much you are spending, I will calculate for you the break-even point. The point at which you'll be making no profit and your business is okay. And then after that point, then you start getting more money from the business. But in many businesses in Uganda are not after profit. They are about revenue to get money to keep surviving, paying for fees, paying for soap, paying for funeral of a friend, contributing, paying, you know, tithes. Those are, that's how businesses in Uganda survive. So if you start business, keep looking at the break-even point. If it does not come, keep committed and running your enterprise. All right. Another question is about how can one discover himself or herself? Self-discovery. Uh, today at 7 o'clock, at 7 p.m., I'm going to give a presentation to the Rotaract, the Rotaract Club of McKay University Business School on, on, on finding the self-person, self-authenticity. How do I find myself? Self-identity. I'm going to give this person the link, and if you want, tune in at 7 p.m. I'm going to talk about, to the Rotaract youth, how you can discover yourself to know yourself. All right, so this person gets the link after this presentation at 7 p.m. My weakness in business is one of spending. How do I develop the mentality of avoiding spend because sometimes it is needed? Now, this person is, 
It's like a sinner who is saying, I want to commit, I don't want to commit this sin, but usually I'm taking up. Now, what do I advise? My weakness in business is one of spending. How do I develop the mentality of avoiding to spend? Because sometimes it's needed. So, what would you advise? Let me just give my thoughts that uh, it's a mentality problem. This person's problem is what? Mentality problem. So, please change your mental case mental setting one prioritize list down priori priorities and say i will not spend on this it's a it's a mental thing it's a, a mind and two what i would advise you put your money on a bank account and keep your atm with a friend that's practical you get that put your money on a bank account and keep the atm with a what with a friend a trusted friend. For you to walk to the bank physically, to go and withdraw, we take you time. You get that? You, by the time you reach the bank, you have sold a second. Then when you go to your friend, may I have that ATM? For what? No, I have something, something. No, tell me what? No, 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 you know, you see, you know. Uh -uh, I'm not giving it to you. You hate me today. You get that? After a month or two or three, you will be streamlined. And you will praise that friend for stopping you from this kind of what? Of, uh, of spending. It is possible to, to change your mind, to start, uh, uh, to start prioritizing. And in this case, reducing putting money on mobile money. Alright? We are encouraging financial inclusion. People to keep mobile money. But for your case, my friend, avoid putting money on what? On the, on the phone. Because the more you put it on the phone, the more you easily click and the money has what? Has, has gone. All right. I think those are the comments. We can, dear moderator, if there are others, we have just a few minutes uh, of our session. And then we can, we can proceed. Yes. Well, thank you very much, our facilitator for being with us. We love you so much. Each and every time we call upon you, you're with us. Uh, it's also a good sign for the youths. I know there are listeners, youths outside there. They're very happy to have the words coming from you. Uh, you really gave us a lot that has touched us so much in our various capacities, which is the best thing the youths are to take. Uh, we, and, uh, bef before I call the, the, the Luganda version, we would request all the priests to go prepare for the Mass. Uh, the program for today, at such a time, is uh, we're going to have a Mass uh, that's being admitted uh, from Nira. Meanwhile, we shall also have a mask here. So I'm going to take this time to welcome our mister for Luganda version. Mr. Alfred, you're welcome. In a good summary for the whole Thank you very much, our moderator. Maybe a point of correction. I'm Robert, not Alfred. Mulungi uh, Aurelisa, now we are at Laba. Tuaranyo Okwebaza, Olokubanti, Otam de Nafe, Mosiri Karuneno, Okuva Dituatan Kidde, Nakule Bulo, Ate, no Naku Uluadero. Nakulwa Kubiri, Mgrenja of Nyokovasa, Professor Badir Vincent, Ogre Gambe Lungi, Biatus Zako, Lungereza, Nan Repatent today, Benan is no guy sent the Ulo, Sente Kaupo, Gantka Santinang, and Womuntu, 
All right, thank you very much for joining us. We shall go shortly off and we shall come back with uh, Holy Mass. Holy Mass is next, so we encourage you to continue being on so that you can attend the Mass. Thank you very much. Youth leaders, animators, religious men and women. This year, Uganda Episcopal Conference, Uganda Catholic Secretariat is organizing online scientific national youth conference for all the young people in the country. Hosted by Radio Maria Uganda and Radio Sapienza. Remember, all the substations of Radio Maria Uganda will broadcast live. All the programs just Tune in and get connected. The theme for the celebration is taken from Luke 714. Young man, I say to you, arise in your respective dioceses. Just tune in and have the celebration live. This program is scheduled from 8th to 13th December 2020. For any information, contact the National Youth Coordinator, Uganda Episcopal Conference, and Radio Maria Uganda. Remember, we are waiting for you to get connected. And don't forget, Christ is alive.